Hey, good morning, Journey Church. We're so excited you're joining us today. Welcome to Journey Church at Home. Welcome, Pastor Vince. We're so Hello, excited. Hello, good morning, Pastor today. John. It's going to be a great morning. We're it so is. excited. Oh. The building is filling. The people are here. We're so excited to be blessed yeah. with another great February. Last week, you guys may have heard, I really thought this was the last Sunday of February, but today is actually <laughs> the last Sunday of February, yeah. so it works out. Yeah. Happy February 28th. It's going to be a wonderful day, like Pastor John said. We're going to be ending our message series of That's the Power of Words. Exactly. And so I hope it's a blessing and encouragement to you. We're so excited about that. So right now we want you guys to take a second to share this video to your Facebook group, your friends, your people, those people out there you love and share and care about because we want to make sure that you're sharing the passion of Jesus with them and everybody else. Absolutely. And we want to say if this is your first time to kind of tune in or maybe you've been tuning in for a while and you want more information about Journey Church, we're going to ask you to text three words, new to Journey, it's right here on the screen, to 31996. This way, when you do that, it fills out kind of like a, a digital connection card and gives us the opportunity to send you information. We're not going to show up at your door. We're not going to knock on your door or make any of that stuff. We just want to say thank you. And one of those things that we're going to thank people with is a $5 gift card to Starbucks. Amen on Starbucks. Right? <laughs> They've been closed lately because of different things with weather. It's been a crazy month of February right. here in Kentucky. But and when Starbucks closes, there are a lot of tears, mostly for me, but it works out. <laughs> so don't forget, ladies, coming up next weekend is If Gathering. The ladies are going to be gathering here at the church and also online to be a part of something spectacular. Absolutely. I'm going to be blessed to be able to be here and to serve the ladies with tech needs and serving food and things like that. But I want to make sure that those ladies watching right now, take a minute, sign up at the If Gathering, uh, contact Pastor Laura online if you want more information for sure, but make sure you get signed up for IF because it is a spectacular event that you want to be a part of. Absolutely, and if you want to register, you can do that by going to iflocal.com. That's I-F-L-O-C-A-L.com. Okay. And so uh, I also want to say that next week uh, we'll be kicking off a new series, the 1st of March. We're going to be talking about kingdom relationships, kingdom partnerships, and what that looks like. And I'm so excited to have Pastor Kamar Ritchie joining us next oh, awesome. week. That's oh, I'm exciting. sorry, I'm sorry, he's two weeks. I'm two sorry, weeks. next week is Pastor John Aiken. You're gonna absolutely love hearing from uh, Pastor John. So, and we wanna make sure you guys realize our focus is what's gonna be happening soon. Coming up soon, we're gonna be switching to online.ourjourney.tv. That's right. That's online.ourjourney.tv. We'll still have a Facebook presence. Yeah, But, pages but we want everyone to like go that. to our online campus. Yeah, exactly. So. As we get ready to move forward with service, remember next week starting March 21st is going to be our next kids service. That is March 21st is our next kids service. So as we move forward with church and move forward with everything happening on, we want to say one thing to you. We want to say welcome home. Welcome to Journey Church. Life is a journey that takes you from here to eternity. Along the way, you'll find out that you have choices to make. Will you look forward with your choices or will you look backwards? Are you looking at your steps or are you looking at Jesus? The road your life takes you on can be difficult, but walking with Jesus will fill your heart with joy and change your destination. Life is a journey. Good morning, Journey Church. Good morning, church family. Pastor John and Pastor Crystal here today. We're so excited to be joining you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we move forward today. Later on in service, don't forget, it is Communion Sunday. We're so excited for that. If you need communion cups, please reach out to Pastor Crystal or myself, and we'd love to get you some, either through Facebook Messenger, text messaging, give us a phone call, uh, send us homing pigeons, whatever you want to do, we will make sure you get these correctly into your hands. So again, we're so excited to be joining you this beautiful Sunday morning. Now let's get ready for worship. Lord, we will praise you. We tell ourselves no matter how we feel, no matter what we've been through, we will praise you. We will lift your name high because you are worthy. You are worthy wonderful. You are beautiful. You are glorious as you are and over our lives, God. We just worship you today for who you are.
beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name didn't want heaven without us so jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater
Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. We lift your name. We magnify your name. Show how beautiful and how glorious and how wonderful and how powerful it is in our lives today. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are so glad to be here. We could not have church because we have a gravel parking lot. And how many knows you cannot scrape a gravel parking lot when it has snow on it? And so we did what uh, we thought would be the best thing other than going to our church is just to come to our Covenant Partner Church. And so we're here, and we're so glad to be here. And so we're going to be ready to take up our tithes and offerings here just in a minute. You know, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, it says the, the policy or the, the responsibility is those of you that are teaching needs to be blessed by those who are hearing. Now, I know that the word is being preached in this place. As a matter of fact, the word in this place goes out all over the world. And so we know that the word is being preached here. And so our obligation then is to do what? To bless those that carry on the gospel. And we want to thank you for the, the tithes and the offerings that you've given here. And also to those of you online. Because let's face it, we couldn't do this without you. You know, you know, preachers can't do this without a, a family and a, a body of people to do this collectively together. And so we want to say that uh, we want to give, there's three ways to give. I even got it written down here because I don't know how you all do it here. But uh, you do it similar to the way we do it. First of all, you can give online. I think there's a, an overhead up here. You can give online. You also, we take cash here. And we also take checks. So remember that. You know, a lot of us uh, old, older people uh, still do it the old-fashioned way. You know, we, we carry cash. But you can give online. And if you look at uh, certain seats in the back, there are tithe uh, envelopes that you can get and fill that out. Also, you can give at the kiosk in the lobby. You can give that way. And so, Pastor Vince, in person... Kiosk online. Did I cover everything? I did it all right. And so, how many more minutes do I have left? Enough to pray. Okay, enough to pray. <laughs> See, I'm submitted. When I come here, I'm submitted. And, and when he comes to our church, he's pretty much submitted there too. <laughs> but uh, I, I want to model how to behave when you come to a guest church. And so we're going to pray over the offering right now. Amen? <laughs> Let's bow our heads. Father, right now we come to you. Oh, it's wonderful to be able to be in your presence and to laugh in your presence. Father, we are in your house. And so, Father, right now, as people are preparing their hearts to give, Father, we know that uh, you love a cheerful giver. And we know that, Father, you have commanded us to be givers because we're created in your image. And so, Father, right now, I pray that you bless the offering, that it would be used for the kingdom of God. Father, I pray that those that give today in the offering, that it would be used to spread the gospel Father, to the four corners of the earth. And Father, we give you the praise, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us at Journey Church. Our hope is that these messages challenge your soul, equip your spirit, and give you a hope for your future. We look forward to doing life with you. For more information about our church, visit us at ourjourney.tv. Now, here is Pastor Vince Farrell. He says, good morning, Journey Church. There you go. Good morning. Oh, that's the power of love. And what we've done is we've kind of etched out the word love to give us this visual imagery of that's the power of words because when we as individuals say we love someone, we need to follow it with how we talk to each other. And over the last several weeks, we've talked about how we can hear what people say and how we can properly speak their language. I know as a pastor, Pastor Mike would agree with me that, that as pastors, there's typically three messages I preach at the same time. It's the one I think I said, it's the one I actually said, and it's the one you heard. 
And I always think God has a sense of humor because he put me, someone who struggles with communication, in the realm of being a communicator. Isn't God funny? I got good news for you. If he can use me, he can use you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God can use you. Amen? Now, now, I want to kind of just bring us all up to speed. You and I both have a spiritual enemy called the devil. Not the person sitting next to you. No, we have an enemy called the devil who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. However, you and I also have a mighty God, a strong tower, who gives us biblical principle, who gave us a road map, who gave us his word that will actually safeguard against the devil. And, and it's, it's this, this tension in relationships that we try to make the other person become what we want or what we think we want. Amen. And so when we talk to each other, when we communicate to each other, here's some biblical advice we should take. It comes from James chapter 1, 19 and 20. My dear brothers and sisters, always, everyone say always. always. Not sometimes. Not when you feel like it. Not when the going is good. Always be willing to listen and slow to speak. Now, I don't know about you, but this scripture verse offends me. Because, I know, I, <laughs> thank you. It's true, because I'm not always willing to listen. And, and I'm, I'm actually many times fast to speak. So, so there's some counsel God gives us. Do not become angry easily because anger will not help you. What does anger not help us do? Live the right kind of life that God wants. Last week, we took um, the different types of personalities and, that God gave us and we linked them to kind of an animal and we discovered some of us are lions some of us are otters, some of us are beavers, some of us are golden retrievers. And, and, and this dynamic, that the thing that we see in the person next to us, the, the job that we so eagerly want to get because we love how that boss is, the relationship with our spouse that attracted us to them, over time becomes the things that we don't like. The things that attracted us to them becomes the things that we no longer enjoy. And I shared with us last week how couples are going to fight. Any couples in here can give me an amen. Wow. Oh, we'll be doing counseling next week. And I made this bold statement. The, the issue is not if you will fight. The issue is how you will fight. Now, I want to share with you what was taught to me by uh, marriage counselor Mark Grunger. I've shared this many years. I've even had props. I've done this so many times. But I just want to move us through real quick to give us just a foundation this morning. And that foundation is men and women are different. <laughs> and guys, what we need to understand about the, the female brain is it's like a, a big ball of yarn. The female brain is, is like a ball of yarn in that everything is connected in one way or another. I come home and my wife says, how was your day today? I said, fine. That's it? Yeah, it was fine. It was a good day. It was productive. Can you tell me about your day? Oh, no. No. If I ask her, how, how, hey, how did that lunch go that you and Emma went to. Emma's our daughter. How, 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 y'all's, how was y'all's lunch? And she'll say, you know, this morning I woke up a little late, so we didn't get to leave at the time we wanted to leave. But when we left, we finally got dressed, and we made a pit stop to Starbucks. I got a mocha, and she got a white chocolate caramel, and it was so delicious. And then we went, and we met, and then we stopped at the store. And at the store, would you believe what they had on sale? 
Oh, no. We're, we're losing time right now. I have to go back in time just to make up the time of how was your lunch? We got there. We got to this lovely German restaurant we love to get, and the, it was packed so full. And we had, and I'm, what, but how was it? I'm getting there. Don't rush me. <laughs> because everything's connected. Men, on the other hand, men are, are, their brain is like a series of boxes and none of them touch. When, when you ask a guy, how was your day, he goes to his box labeled today, <laughs> reaches in there, and shows you how it went. Fine. <laughs> What'd you do? Oh, my. <sighs> Worked. You know, I mean, <clears throat> and so this is now, I know we have kids, so I'll try to be sensitive, but this is why men and women, when it comes to that gift that God gave married people called physical relationships, y'all following me? Okay. This is why a man can go to work, get fired, come home, gets a flat tire on the way home, runs over his neighbor's dog, comes home, opens the door, sits on the couch, looks at his wife and goes, you want to get it on? Because they're not, nothing's connected. But with a, with a woman, you, you, it, takes, oh, it takes a little time. That's why scripture tells us, <laughs> always be willing to listen. It helps us live the type of life God wants. And in and, and verse 33, let me just jump ahead. Verse 33 of Ephesians chapter 5, Paul gives us four things man must be to a wife. And then he gives two things and really focuses it down to one that a wife must be to the husband. And the two things... And I know every time I preach this, the women usually stand up and cl ch clap and cheer and say, that's right. And I'm going to ask you not to do that this morning, okay? <clears throat> but, but the first thing, he says, wives, be submissive. Wow, you didn't have to fight that, did you? <laughs> and the reason why, when I ever, whenever I share that, I always have ladies come up to me after service. Well... I'll submit if he's doing those four things. Oh, I bet you're a joy to live with. <clears throat> I'll submit as long as I know he's doing the right thing. Mm, doesn't work that way. I know, and I, I can't go through it right now. Y'all just give me some grace. The second thing is respect. The number one thing, and I'm just going to be transparent, the number one thing that puts wind beneath my wings is knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt my wife respects me, that my children respect me. We might not like each other at times. We may not agree, but knowing at the end of the day they respect me, I can climb any mountain. I know that when my wife gets together with other women and they start bad-mouthing their husband, my wife's not part of that. Even though I give her plenty of ammunition. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. Because none of us here are perfect, amen? Right. Now, that word submitting in verse 29-30 is a continuation of verse 21, where scripture says, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. This has been so taken out of context, this, this under my thumb reality of men keeping their wives oppressed. That is not biblical. Amen. Submitting to one another. Now I'm gonna move on because I'm gonna, I'm gonna give us a couple great quotes. First of all comes from Dr. Grotman, 
expert on relationships. He says, I believe we're going to find that respect and affection are essential to all relationships working and contempt destroys them. Another philosopher by the name of Aretha Franklin, she said it best, (laughs) I'm about to give you all my money and all I'm asking in return, honey, is to give me my propers when you get home. You want to know what that is? It's a little (laughs) R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. Sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me. Now, now listen, respect. (laughs) Now listen, respect is the one element that if removed from any institution, government, family, job, anything, marriage, it will immediately begin to fall apart. This is why I've challenged us over these last several weeks that whatever your language is that you need to hear, okay? Like, like me, uh, we all know I am a red. I am a bona fide red. I need, I need loyalty. It's why, as I said, I, underneath my wings is, is knowing that my spouse is not talking bad about me, that she's loyal, that people in the church are loyal to the cause of what Christ is doing here. I mean, that's just my, how I speak. So if I sense there's anything of, of disloyalty, my walls go up. I start filtering what you're saying through a whole th- new set of lenses. I, I have to have a sense of control. I know. You're so controlling. Thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I am. I am when I feel things are out of control. If I feel things are chaotic, then I want to take control and bring peace. Appreciation, credit for work. If you're if you're yellow, all these things, and I've encouraged you, take photos, do the test, find out who you are, because these are the languages you need to hear when you communicate, when you have arguments, because arguments will arise. But if we have respect, it is a hundred times more powerful than any disagreement. Let me say that again. Respect is a hundred times more powerful than any disagreement. Whether in a boardroom, a classroom, a church, respect will always get you further ahead than the power of dysfunction. Dysfunction is powerful. Dysfunctional makes, makes companies head towards bankruptcy. It makes government gridlock. It makes the church, instead of being a place of giving life, instead become a place that deters people from the church. This is why when we look at the spiritual gifts that God gave the church, there needs to be order to them. There doesn't need to be chaos in the church. Dysfunction in a church causes people to leave and to never Come back. Respect, order in the home, lack of it will cause deep hurt. It will cause scars and injuries that last generations. Marriages that don't have respect end in divorce. Because sin always wants to drive a wedge. Always. If the door is left open, sin will try to creep in there and drive a wedge. And unrepentant sin, listen to me, because if you're here this morning and and you're just kind of coasting through, waiting for that issue you're dealing with to to fix itself through marriage, well, we don't have premarital sex anymore because we got married. Really? Because you shouldn't have it because you repented and asked God to keep you pure from this day forward. Sin always tries to separate. Unrepentant sin always always separates us from God. If, if, you're, if you're praying and asking God and you're just feeling this roadblock in your heart, what's going on, I would encourage you, ad- address any type of unrepentant sin. Here's the next one. Respect, it, it bonds and binds us together. Because my wife and I, uh, we're getting ready to celebrate 24 years Yes, thank you. Yes. <clears throat> 24 years. I got married when I was 21. I'm now officially uh, married longer than single. And so 
there, there's going to be disagreements you're going to have. But if you can learn to respect each other, and I, I'm so gracious and, and thankful God gave me her because, like I said, I don't always am quick to listen. I, I, I've always got to come back too fast. I'm, I'm never wrong. I've always got to be right. And she's had to put up with that for years. Now, as I mentioned before, we have a spiritual enemy. And he always is trying to get us to live opposition to God's way. What's God's way? God's way is for you to have faith. Amen? That's why disbelief creeps in. God's way is to have love. Amen? What's the opposite of love? How many of you said hate? Wrong, wrong. It's not hate. We think it is in our natural mind, but biblically, the opposite of love is fear. Because perfect love casts out fear. I'm telling you, church, we don't have to live in fear if we're operating under God's love. If Jesus, the perfect incarnation of God's love, can touch lepers, you can shake someone's hand. Going to get people calling me. Okay. God's way is to hope. The opposite of hope is despair. God's way is respect. The opposite is contempt. God desires us to show respect while our enemy, the devil, desires us to show contempt. And contempt simply means the feeling in which a person regards anything Mean, vile, worthless. The state of being despised. Dishonor. Disgrace. It's why I'm sure we've all seen on court or maybe we've experienced in a court setting, the judge gavels and says, I'm going to hold you in contempt. Now, in everyday life, there's this, there's this absence of respect shows by, by many characteristics, how can, how can I know if there's an absence of respect? Well, how many times do you get eyes rolled at you? <laughs> Name calling, sneering, sarcasm, mocking. Contempt never solves problems. And many times, the loss of respect doesn't happen overnight. No one wakes up and just goes, you know what, today I'm choosing not to respect you anymore. Instead, it happens over time because of a loss of trust, because of long, unresolved, simmering, negative thoughts. Because contempt first happens through mental criticism. Loss of respect starts by mental criticism. Some of us, we've lost the respect for our boss for our parents, for our spouse. So I want to I want to I want to give us some some guidelines. I want to give us some assistance that that when you find yourself in the heat of the moment in an argument with the person you said to death do us part, when when you find yourself in an argument with your boss, children, when you find yourself in an argument with your parents, I'm going to give you some, some guidelines, and I promise you, these guidelines, my wife and I, we've been attempting to practice them for years. Is that an accurate statement? Because there have been times that while I have been pastor over the last 10 years teaching these, I've broken the rules and she's had to say, uh-uh, <laughs> rule number four. Okay, let's just, okay. So I'm saying this, that we need to have grace, which is point number one. If you're taking notes, how to fight fair, number one, develop a gracious complaint department. <laughs> That's hard, especially in today's culture. I get to travel with Dale Quite often, my father-in-law, he's in Mexico right now. Thank you for your prayers. And, and we'll go check into a hotel, 
And y'all won't believe this, but we'll go to that hotel that we reserved and confirmed a week before, and they will look at us, and they're like, we don't have a reservation for you. Like, what? Was it under a different name? Why would, why would I do that? <laughs> and, and then finally, they'll find it after a few moments of, you know, bringing out the paperwork and showing them. But it's amazing how, in today's culture, if you have an issue, you're the one who's wrong. I went to go buy a suit several years ago, and, ma'am, I, I need to return this. Well, did you not try it on before you took it? I'm sorry. I came here for a resolve, and instead I'm getting an accusation. We, as family in the church, with our spouse, we need to learn how to let people come and complain and us be gracious. Again, I struggle with this. But if you and I, as individuals committed to love, will allow the person to say, you know what? I feel this way, true or false, and I want to share it with you. Now, now let me help you understand when I say gracious complaint because there's three different levels. What we typically do is we come with a level of contempt. I need to talk to you, yeah? Yeah, you're the problem that you need to fix. That's contempt. When you start coming at people with you, you, and you, where do I go from there? You're, you, you. Criticize is, yeah, I, I heard what you did, but instead, I really think you meant this. And you start putting thought processes onto them. You start putting words that they never said. That's, that's being critical. Complaint is being able to go, you know what, I feel when you said that the other day that you were, I felt like it was a personal attack. Oh, I didn't mean that at all. Now, here's number two. Remove phrases, and this is hard. Remove phrases from your lingo always, never, and every time. You know, every time we come to this part, you always, always? I just feel like you never, never? This is hard. Because the longer you get, stay married to each other, the more tempting it's going to be to use always and never. I get called out on this one a lot. Well, I just feel like you're always, oh, blah, 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 always? No, no, not always. It's just different from the way I would do it. When, when we use words like always and never, we give no room for the person we love to be able to grow. You're always on my case. You never keep your word. You, you never help around the house. Well, every time I bring it up, you always, where do you go from that? There's no way to improve. There's no way to, 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 to repent and, and go to the next level. And so in this, what we, instead what we, what we want to do is we want to be clear and not critical. See, <clears throat> clear is saying things like, hey, can you, um, can you come help get these... Um, these items out of the hamper, take them to the hamper for me. That's being clear. I need help. Can you help me? Critical is, well, look who I have to clean after, after too. Not just the kids, but also you. Being clear is, hey, would you help get the kids ready for bed? Being critical is, hey, would you carry some of the weight around here? No amens on any of that, huh? I'm going to step back. So, so, so again, listen, I've had a long day. I'm exhausted. Would you, would you mind just if I just stepped out for a moment? And, and in this, what we're trying to do is we're trying to not character bash. Because as our emotions get heated... We will be tempted, well, 
that's just so like you. Aren't you just like your mother? (laughs) Oh, yeah, well, it figures you'd say something like that. You know, someone like you would say that. Someone like me? What am I? You're the devil. (laughs) It's like, no, pastor said I'm not the devil. Because when, when we're critical, again, to quote Dr. Gottman again, people can change only when they feel that they are liked and that they're basically liked and accepted for who they are. When we spend all of our time trying to change that person, well, what's, what's wrong with me? See, life and death is in the tongue. And if we try to make all of our energies to change them to be the way we want. And I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about sin issues. I'm talking about personalities that God gave us. See, I, I know I'm aggressive and I'm harsh. I'm a go-getter. But I'm also the most loyal, the most passionate. I'll be your friend till the day you die. So, so I know my strengths and weaknesses. And if we always focus on people's weaknesses, they don't change because they feel like you don't even like them. Does that make sense? Here's the fourth one. Don't settle for what I call ceasefire. This is a big one because many times we don't see in an argument a positive outcome is going to happen. You know, we're just not going to see things her way. She's not going to see things our way. That boss, and so what we do, instead of pressing through to get conflict resolution, instead, we just want this thing to be over with. So we'll say things, okay, fine, have it your way. No, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right, right. Let's just quit talking about it. Whatever, just forget about it. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. There, is that what you want to hear? Ephesians 4, 26 tells us, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And so a lot of times, we'll we'll just, let's just get this over with before the night comes. But let me share with you some steps to actually push through ceasing fire. Because when you say, cease fire, let's not talk about right now, then what happens is two weeks when it happens again, everything festers up again. Am I right? Okay, a couple of you. All right, good. And so we have to learn conflict resolution. Now, let me say something real quick. Because as a Christian in America, as a pastor in America, we don't know how to do this in the church. Like I said, we don't repent. We don't ask God to restore us. We just try to fix the wrong. But to deal with conflict properly and push through to resolve it, here's some steps. Number one. Somebody or both parties must accept personal responsibility for what was done. You want to parallel that? When we come to Jesus, what do we do? We say, Father God, I am a sinner. I admit I have sinned in your eyes. God, I realize when I look at what you did for me, I realize there's nothing I could have done to earn it. Because I'm a wrecked man anyway. I mean, didn't we pray that? And so when you take responsibility and and you tell your spouse, you tell your kids, listen, what I said was wrong. That was that was a bad call on my part. I'm the one. Yes, what I said caused you to do all that stuff, but ultimately, if I had Kept my tongue. If I had, it was my fault. And so when you accept personal responsibility, you then do the second thing. And you need to ask that person, hey, will you please forgive me? Now, again, we don't do this. What we do, especially us guys, right? I love the scene from What About Bob? The doctor has been giving Bob a hard time all week, and Bob's taking a shower, and his wife's telling him, you need to apologize to Bob. He's like, no, I don't want to. You need to. So what does the doctor do? He just looks over, and Bob's like, and that's it. 
And that's what we do. Are we good? Hey, are we good here? Yeah, we're good. All right. No, no, no. This is important because what did we do? We asked God to forgive us. God, I ask that you forgive me of my sins because I believe your word. Your word says that you are faithful and just to forgive me. And so, God, I'm coming to you, and I ask that you would forgive me. I should not have said that. I should not have looked on that. I should not have clicked that. I should not coerced her to sleep with me. It's good preaching. I don't care who you are. And so we ask out loud, will you forgive me for treating you like a piece of meat? Will you forgive me for using you to satisfy my own urges? Will you forgive me for speaking harshly to you out of anger and bitterness? Will you forgive me for saying things I should not have said? Will you please forgive me? It is, it is so important that you, outside your head, you use your mouth to say, will you please forgive me? If you mean it. Now, if you don't mean it, don't say it. But if you do mean it, you have to say it. Because you need to wait till they say out loud, I forgive you. Now this, again, what, want, what we want to happen is, hey, will you forgive me? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. No, 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 hold on. Stay in the moment here. I'm asking you to forgive me. Yeah, I already said I'm over it. I, I, will you say that you forgive me? I need to hear yeah, I forgive you. Will you mean it, please? Because I want to do my best to change and become the man, become the parent, become the employee. But I, I need you to forgive me because I've not done what I should have. I, I can see that you're being sincere. I forgive you. Thank you. And, and then both of you move in God's grace. That is how you resolve conflict. Admitting that you're wrong, taking personal responsibility, asking for forgiveness, and then allowing them to say, you're forgiven. That's why we as Christians and as believers here in this building and watching online, this is why we should be the most happiest, joyful people on planet because we've confessed our sins to God and he said, I have forgiven you. Number five. Stay on issue, don't bring up the past. See, the reason why <clears throat> we are so quick to say, oh, just like last time, is because we didn't do step four properly. See, God, when we ask for forgiveness, his word promises us that that sin is as far from the east as to the west. Stay on issue, even if it happens again. And I, I want to I I give a real-life example because in the very beginning stages, this hasn't happened in, in many years. I have beat her to submission, and it's great. It, no, I'm joking. <laughs> but, but as two individuals who, who each had checking accounts come together as one and are now sharing a checking account, I would either spend money and not tell her or vice versa. And so there were times, believe it or not, in the beginning stages of our marriage that we would actually get overdraft bills. It was crazy. No one else has done that, I'm sure. <laughs> and so we'd get in arguments. You know, well, you need to manage it better. You need to tell me. You know. And so what would happen is we, we'd resolve it. Okay, I'll start writing it down. I'll keep receipts. Okay, and, I'll, and then what happens a couple years later, it would happen again. And the temptation is to reach back the last time and bring it to this conversation for this time. I thought we talked about this. You always, there you go. I said I was sorry. It was a simple mistake. Yeah, just like last time was a simple mistake. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> if, you're bringing up, if you're bringing up issues from last time, then you haven't forgiven like you should have. 
If you keep making the same mistake over and over and over and over again, you haven't repented like you should have. Here's the next one. These are rules to help you get through the the tough times. Number six, don't quote your pastor. Okay, listen, listen, leave me out of it. Okay, I didn't didn't get you in this mess. Y'all get in an argument and you're like... Remember what Pastor Vince said? Hey, (laughs) shut your mouth. (laughs) Don't quote me. Number seven. Now, and this is so good. Again, my wife has been so gracious to me. If you break one of the rules, hey, let's have a time out. Okay? You said always. Well, it feels like always. Okay, look, time out, time out, time out. Let's take a break. And let's pick back up later when our emotions have died down. Because scripture says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. And that's hard. But only what is helpful for building each other's up. Okay? All right. According to their needs. Oh, wow. Because, see, I'm, I'm a selfish person. I, I want to talk out of what I can get out of it. I want them to change. I want them to... No, don't do that. Because what comes out of your mouth should benefit. It should benefit. Can I just ask you, can your boss truly rely on you? Can your children truly rely on you? Do they do they see you as someone who's always my way or the highway? Do what I say. I would encourage you if that's you, give your heart to Jesus. I know that sounds bold. But because as the leader of my family, I'm called as the leader to be like Jesus, which means I have to be the number one server. And I don't know about you guys, but as a red lion, that's hard. So I'm constantly having to die to self. Constantly. But I'd rather die to self through God's grace than be crucified by my wife and children. And like I said, they're gracious to me. But we're not perfect. We have issues just like you do. Just a different set of issues I chose not to talk about this morning. (laughs) Because we're not perfect, amen? What a great message today from Pastor Vince. Amen, amen on that. Now continue with us as we move into a time of communion. So communion is something special we do here once a month at Journey Church. It's always the last weekend of the month because we want to make sure that we are honoring what God has given to us. And one of those things we do is communion together as a body. Whether you're a body here at the 425 Millbrook Drive campus or if you're with us in online church. So right now we're going to move forward with the bread. The bread symbolizes who Jesus is, his body, his love for us, and just his, his coming to life to show us the example of who we should be with. So let's pray over this. God, we just thank you for this bread. We thank you for this time, this, this moment of you being the perfect example of who we should be as humans and as people. And we're so excited to be blessed to be here with you. God, bless this bread. Give it to us as a reminder of who you are and what you came to do. Amen. (laughs) And now we will take the juice. The juice represents the blood of Christ as he shed it for us to forgive our sins. Let's pray first. Dear Lord, thank you for your sacrifice for our lives. Thank you for your sacrifice in allowing us to be forgiven for our sins. Lord, we want to honor you and show you how much we cherish you by continuing to do this ritual time and time again. 
Amen. Amen. Again, thank you guys so much for joining us today at Journey Church Online. You are truly part of our church family and we are blessed to have you with us. So I wanna make sure you guys are ready. Next week, we have something exciting happening. We have Pastor John Aiken from Paducah, Kentucky coming in and he's gonna be sharing with us Kingdom Connections. I've, I've traveled to Mexico with Pastor John. I've seen him in person here with Dr. Dale a whole lot and he's an amazing man of God and you're gonna be blessed by his word. So again, Journey Church family, Thank you for joining us right now. We're so excited to be able to be your online campus pastors. You are loved and cherished, and we hope you guys have a great Sunday afternoon. See you next week. Thank you for joining us at Journey Church. Our hope is that these messages challenge your soul, equip your spirit, and give you a hope for your future. We look forward to doing life with you. Now, let's go this week and be the church in our community as we focus on loving God and loving others. See you next week.